Hey, fourth graders. All right, so today we are going to look at the standard algorithm, and that seems like a big mathy word, but I'll explain it here in a second. The standard algorithm for multiplying when we're multiplying multi-digit numbers times a one-digit number. All right, so we're looking at two, three, or four-digit numbers times one-digit numbers today, and we're going to be looking at the standard algorithm. The standard algorithm is kind of what might be considered the normal way to multiply. And what I want to do is I want to relate the standard algorithm to the other strategies that we've been learning so you can see how those strategies actually help us to build up to a deeper understanding of what we're doing with the standard algorithm for multiplication. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, before we get started, I just want to mention that this video goes with lessons 7, 8, and 9. Lessons 7, 8, and 9 are all based on the standard algorithm of multiplication. And so this video will go with all three of those lessons. And again, just like with the other ones, if you want to do multiple lessons within a single day so that you can get through your math unit faster, that's absolutely fine. That's up to you. But remember, the idea is that you are understanding what we're doing. I've seen a lot of students try and work really quickly and not really understand what they're doing. So as long as you're doing one lesson each day, that's perfect. Okay, but if you if you get it, you're like, yeah, this is easy. I've got this. Go ahead and do more lessons, knock it out, and then you can finish math a little bit early. Um, that's up to you how you want to do that. But, you know, again, making sure that you're at least doing one lesson each day and that you're really understanding what you're doing. Okay, so standard algorithm of multiplication. Let's look at a three-digit number times a one-digit number first. Okay, so we are going to multiply 396 times Four. 396 times 4. Now remember, if I'm not so great with my multiplication facts, really quickly, I know everything I'm multiplying is going to be times 4. So I could list my multiple, my 4 times tables just over to the side super fast, right? I could go, okay, 4. I know I always start with 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. And remember, I always start stop with the 4 times 10. So right there's my 4 times tables. And that's going to help me if I don't know how to solve this problem, like I don't have my 4 times tables memorized, that's going to help me solve um, a lot easier. All right. So let's take a look at the standard algorithm for multiplication. Now, when I'm doing my standard algorithm, I'm going to write the numbers just like I would if I were doing partial products. I have 396 times 4. And also, just like with partial products, I am multiplying the 4 times everything up at the top. The difference is with partial products, I was listing each partial product down below and then adding together. With this, I'm adding as I go because I'm going to regroup, okay? That's the biggest difference between the partial product strategy and the standard algorithm for multiplication. All right, so let's take a look at it using partial products first, just as a reminder. So I'm gonna start with four times six. This is the ones place, so I'm just doing four times six. Well, let's see here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Four times six is 24. Four times 90, remember I'm in the tens place now, so it's gonna have to end with a zero. All right, four times 90, well, let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That would be 360. All right, and this is in the hundreds place, so I know I'm gonna have two zeros at the end. All right, and I have four times three, one, two, three, that's 12, so 1,200. And when I add all of that together, I get four, eight, five, one, 1,584. Now, again, I wanted to show you how the partial product strategy relates to the standard algorithm. So you can see that you're actually doing the exact same thing. It just it looks a little different. All right. So we have 396 times four. Let's do this the standard algorithm way. So I'm going to do the same thing. Four times six. Four times six is 24. So here I'm going to write my ones place and regroup my tens place, all right? So four times six is 24. Now I'm gonna do four times nine. Four times nine is 36, and I have to add in what I regroup. So four times nine is 36, 37, 38. So write my eight, regroup my three. 
And now I do four times three. Four times three is 12. And I have to add this three in. So four times three is 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, so I got 1,584. Again, if you're really confused about the regrouping part, and you're like, yeah, I'm not really so sure about that. Or if you forget to go in, you know, like ones place, tens place, hundreds place, you can stick with partial products. You do not have to do multiplication this way with a standard algorithm. This is just another strategy. Some think people think that this is faster and easier. Some people think that this is faster and easier. Some people think that the area model is faster and easier. And that's what's so cool is you have all of these different strategies to pull from and you figure out which one your brain's like, hey, I like this one the best. Do that one, all right? You, you learn them all so that you know which one you like the best. All right, let's look at another one. Let's do, um, let's time we're gonna do a four digit number times a one digit number. And I'm only gonna do it with a standard algorithm um, just for the sake of time with this video. If you're preferring the partial product strategy or the distributive property area model strategy, that's fine. Um, you know, just the, this is just showing you another way to multiply. All right, so I have 4,608 times seven. 4,608 times seven. Again, if I don't know my seven times tables, I could list them just like I did my fours, starting with seven, and I count up by groups of seven until I get to 70. Okay, it takes about 30 seconds to do that, so it's a really great strategy if you are not knowing your multiplication tables. I'm not gonna write it out right now because I do know my multiplication tables, but if you are, don't have those memorized yet, that's a great strategy to use. All right, so we have 4,608 times seven. Remember with the standard algorithm, I'm multiplying the number on the bottom times the number on the top, and I have to go in backwards place value order. So from the ones place, this time up to the thousands place. And I'm gonna regroup each time and add in what I'm regrouping, all right? So one thing that is a little bit can be confusing about this is you're multiplying and then adding, multiplying and then adding, multiplying and then adding. Whereas with the um the standard algorithm or with the partial products you just multiply and then you add okay so let's take a look at this I'm not sure if the video is paused or not at least on my end anyway <laughs> i'm going to keep going and hope that it's actually recording better than it looks like it is on my screen all right so let's do seven times eight seven times eight is 56 so remember i write my ones place regroup my tens place all right, now I have seven times zero, seven times zero is zero, anything times zero is zero, but I have to add in my five, so zero plus five is five. Now I have seven times six, seven times six is 42. Write my two, regroup my four. I didn't have anything to add that time because I didn't regroup at all before. And then I do seven times four, seven times four is 28, plus four more, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. That's 32. So 32,000. 256 would be my answer. All right, again, so that's two examples using the standard algorithm, one with a three-digit number, one with a four-digit number. If this strategy is the best one for you, great. If it's not, great. All right, you're going to pick your multiplication strategy based on what you feel like you are understanding and what you feel like is the best strategy for you to get the answer correct most of the time. So if you're doing this strategy because you're like, I want to do this strategy, this is like the normal way to multiply, all right, but you're getting it wrong all the time, it's probably not the right strategy for you to use, right? If this strategy is working for you or if the area model distributive property is working for you, stick with that. Stick with what works. The idea is that you can get an accurate answer and not necessarily that you're doing math in a certain way. The cool thing is math can be done in a million different ways. In fact, I'm not showing you every single multiplica multiplication strategy that exists. You may find a strategy that we aren't even talking about that works really great for you. Perfect. Do that. All right. If you guys have any questions, please let your math teacher know. As always, have a wonderful day. And again, this video is going with three lessons, lessons seven, eight, and nine. All right. Have a great day, guys. Bye.